you look out there and it looks like a blue blanket. And once you put a mask and snorkel on and stick your head under there, um, you're in for a lot of interesting surprises, some positive, some negative. I have a corporate job in the city and I get to come and free dive with sharks before work. And that's just a totally different world. When you get to experience such a pristine environment like that, you really want it to stay pristine and protect it. I, I'm Charlie. My name's Duncan. We're both scuba divers and free divers. I grew up snorkeling. Duncan grew up surfing in South Africa. Uh, and then, yeah, we met and it's just great because all of our hobbies just keep building on each other. We spend most of our time in the water or next to it. So it was an interesting period where we got to know each other, um, most of it underwater, which has its bonuses. You can't really complain and talk. And <laughs> <laughs> an hour of silence. <laughs> an hour, yeah, an hour of silence is always good for a relationship. <laughs> The first thing is just looking at the conditions and working out how you're going to get in and out safely. I'll jump in and put my fins on once we get in. Yeah, and then I think on the exit we'll try to get back to the beach instead of trying to get back out of the rocks. Once you get in, often the plan changes. One of the tricks with free diving is to really relax yourself so that you conserve as much air in your body as possible so you can stay down for longer. The dangerous part of the dive is that last few metres where you could get a shallow water blackout. It was during COVID when we were locked to our five kilometre bubble that we started doing a lot of free diving. And one day our neighbour came running across saying that he's just found an overhang full of sharks. So since then we've just been going back for the last three to four years, diving that same spot and recording what we're seeing. So we're talking about grey nurse sharks. They're just these really beautiful sharks because they look incredibly sharky. They look quite like a kind of great white. They've got that white tummy, the grey back, and they've got big teeth that you can see, but they're so calm. They're totally safe to dive with. Um, during the day, they're half asleep, so they just float very slowly. We suddenly realised that they're putting a shark net right next to an aggregation site of a critically endangered shark. So that was the impetus to start doing something about that. The fact that there's this reliable place where they spend time, rest, regroup uh, in Bondi, it's, it's mad that you've got a shark net just metres away. So the shark nets were first deployed in New South Wales in 1937. What they were thinking at the time was that if they put these nets out, they would trap and kill the local sharks, and after a while there'd be just no sharks within the area that swimmers were swimming. So they were designed specifically not as barriers, they were designed to kill. And these nets are only 150 metres long and about 6 metres deep, but they're deployed in much deeper water. And Bondi, for example, is 800 metres across. So you've got what is essentially an underwater volleyball net there. The idea that that is protecting you from a shark is as ludicrous as it sounds. They're just, at best, a placebo effect for the public. It's been really interesting for us during this campaign because people are only now starting to understand that these things aren't barriers. There were mothers who were saying they would bring their kids to Bondi because it was netted, and when they realised what this net actually is, they were like, well, that's not a barrier, that's not keeping me safe. So there's an option to always go and swim at another beach where there is an enclosure where you have a barrier. There's a number of people saying that the shark nets are actually attracting predatory sharks closer to shore. We've seen a lot of evidence of other animals that are caught in those nets being predated on. So stingrays coming out with massive shark bite chunks taken out of them. The amount of bycatch is unacceptable. So things like dolphins, turtles, seals, dugons, uh, if they can't get back to the surface to take a breath, that's the end of them. No government's going to want to remove these nets when the public thinks they're keeping them safe. It's certainly one of the most interesting <laughs> exits. <laughs> okay, Harry. 
That was a bit sketchy in and out, but beautiful conditions once we we're out there. Great there's underneath, nice clear conditions and good lot of sharks. How long are you two going to do this for? Until they're gone. <laughs> yeah, we'll still keep filming the sharks with or without the nets.